Hello and welcome back to another video from the uh, fanpub.com player profile. We're putting Sean under the microscope. Hey, it's good to be back and it's always nice to get these player profiles thrown at me and Al's going to give me a live one right now. So who are you choosing this week? What, who, which player? It's a tight end. I know you love tight ends. Oh, God. Thanks. Um, he's going 68 overall. Blimey. So we're talking... Better well, be Travis Kelsey. That's obviously not. But. In the sixth <laughs> round. Yeah. Sixth round. That's good. Tight end six overall. Yeah, brilliant. Who is it? Evan Ingram. Yeah, fabulous. No. Um, forget tight ends, actually. Um, no. No, there's no point. Look, look, look even in a small league, right, um, don't don't buy into the scarcity of the position. Look, unless there's a premium involved, unless there's something special involved with these tight ends, frankly, there are a few good ones, right? And, and in my view, there's one great one, and that's it. And I would argue the ones underneath is pack. The pack numbers speak for themselves every single year. Right, I can give you the prediction. Right, most tight ends are going to give you sixty-five to eighty-five fantasy points. Now you can argue and say that's crazy and standard. Do you know what? We've got five years worth of data. That's what it. Yeah, that's to be. standard data. Obviously, standard in difference in PPR slightly, but so marginally. Right. So you'd have to add on. You know, you'd have to add on the PP va PPR value based on half point and full point accordingly to get the data. Unless it's tight end premium. Unless it's a premium. But the point here for this video is tight ends for me are 10 a bloody penny. Someone's got him at 19. Evan Ingram. No. What? I mean, why? No. I can't. Look, I'm in a league. I understand. I'm in a small league. Do I, do I bother taking the tight end now? No, I'm waiting. I mean, every single year for the last few years... I may not even bother drafting. I mean, I mean, I know that sounds really weird, but I might take a punt on another player deep down, or I might take a punt on a hooper, or I might take a punt on a, a tight end that's just a pack guy later. I might get Delaney Walker in round 12. Let me give you a couple I'd, of late I'd, tight ends I like. I'd rather take that. Delaney Walker, yeah, right. Yeah, I'd, absolutely. Greg Olson's going to go Yeah, I'd, I'd take Greg He's Olson. He's still playing. Yeah, yeah, I'd take Greg Olson because the upside when he plays is massive. Yes, he could get injured, but there are tight ends out there that I can... Plug and play, yeah. I mean, is it like Darren? Is it Darren Waller, the, the yeah. open guy? He, yes, it he, is. He's, he's like Evan Ingram. He's, he's a pure catcher. He doesn't he, block at all. The thing, the thing is with with tight ends generally in in fantasy is the problem. The problem comes is that we we tend to overvalue the position, and the data does not spell this out. The data does not spell it out at all. There is one elite tight end that's still elite, and the rest we can Tell argue. Tell me why he's going thirteen space at a Bavaria Kebra. I I think he plays with luck. Who actually does throw? Touchdown for the time. I think it's because of the void in the Giants. Yeah, but the Giants are a, they're that's a, what they're it, a mess, that's, I think. That's what it comes down to. I think people see a void that's been left and who's going to pick up the target. So that's what they're seeing. But I see a mess. And I actually see... Look, if you haven't got an elite wide receiver to take away the coverage, right? Then they you stack... Shepherd, haven't they? Yeah. God, is he, he's not elite. No. Is it look? It'd be a, a yeah, look. Shepherd himself. That could be a video in itself. Corey right? Coleman. No. No. So what I'm saying, what will happen? A coordinator will do this. You put your best corner on Shepherd, right? So you have safety or corner. Put him on him and say, listen, just just nullify that guy for me. Take him out of the game. Let my other men focus on the running game. Just take him out. I'm not worried about Coleman. In fact, actually, I'm going to be disrespectful to him, and I would do this as a coordinator. When you're marking Coleman, ignore him and take a rush. You can leave the man wide open. If they score on it, I'll be a miracle, particularly on. Eli's left hand side just a point yeah. just a he... point just a point on observation and I'll actually have you corner blitzing a lot once Eli realises this is going on then on the next play threaten to do it back off and cover Coleman and watch the interception because that's what's coming that's how obvious they are okay for me they are so one dimensional now the problem is I love I, I, I mean we had a video on this I do love Sackle. We've been high on him. We know that. But he's going to face... He's a brilliant player. But he's going to face so much pressure this year. And he probably can carry them. I'm not knocking Well, him. he did it, to be fair yeah. to him. He did it last year with a, but, a rubbish O-line. Yeah, and I, I know he lost... I know he lost Beckham for half the year. And I understand... Well, he lost Beckham for the whole year. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, I, I, I know that... You know, he did carry the team. I know that, but at least there was some credibility in the squad for some periods of time. There's some danger, man. But now, you know, another year... Eli's data... Is like yards per average throw. I mean, the league average is seven point eight, and that's that's like you know absolute rubbish. This is like six point four per yard. I mean, 
we're, we're getting to the point where even I feel like I can out muscle him. I mean, that's ridiculous. He's we just a bit off the sack one, though. Isn't oh, but it's terrible. But yeah, even so, because you get yards after the catch, so it's not as simple as that. So what, what about Evan Ingram then? Who, who takes him out? No, you have to you have to keep the tight end in there because he's going to need all the protection he can get. Because he's you, not a blocker. He's, he's a pure. Blocker. That's the problem that becomes. I mean, at the end of the day, if I'm saying as a you know, no, that's a blocking tight end as well. He's going to need both. I mean, I, In, Ingram. The reason why Evan Ingram goes earlier, and this is the argument for him yeah and I'm not a fan of his either are you a buyer no no of course not (laughs) absolutely (laughs) give us the devil's advocate it's the most ridiculous ADP out of all of them good for you that is yeah absolutely agree 68 no Sorry, but you yes, know, yes. you know, somebody will buy that high. This yeah. is the this is the problem because they fall into the catch. All the Giants have to throw all day. He's a he's a pass catcher. People see a few tight ends go off the board, and they think, "Oh, this guy's got the next big upside." No, he hasn't. No, he I mean, hasn't. You know, it's just. I've never I've never drafted him any time, and I never will. Um, I can go too high. I, I can't put my eggs in a tight end basket in standard, even half point PPR or even full point PPR. That that's going to make the difference to the scoring. There are other players around these guys that can make the difference to the scoring. They don't do it. He's not going to do it. And the Giants have bigger fish to worry about than him. Mm. And I really am concerned when ADP data does not match reality. This list, actually, this is a really big rub. I'm sorry, fantasy experts on this. How is he going above Ebron and Najoku? You can't based on last year's data. I mean, if you had to make a case for a tight end, right? Um, and you could use both of those and Why say... Why someone have got him at 19? I've no idea. I mean, idea. what Ing- Evan Ingram are they watching? Well, what, what do you think is going to happen? You think he's going to give you 180 fantasy points? I mean, seriously. I mean, what are you expecting? A 10 to 12 touchdown year and 1,300 yards? A Kelsey performance? It's not it's not high octane offense for that. That's not what they're all about. Yeah, and it, and Barkley's going to be playing A B C D. Well, and, Eli's yeah. going to be back to his absolute best, put, ripping the ball down the field and putting it into risky tight spiral windows. To be fair to windows. Eli, and um, you know he he he's got a lot of battles last year, rightly so. But the O line is just horrible. It, it's not his fault always. Definitely not. Look, the guy is a two time winning quarterback in Super Bowls without a shadow of a doubt. That was not by luck. That guy in key games was clutch for the Giants. Clutch. And you can never take that away from him. And that makes him a Hall of Famer. No he's matter not how that you player argue anymore, it, is he? But he's nowhere near that now. And I think he's down to the O-line being he, consistently He, he has taken a battery. You know what? My major concern for him is ending the career on a serious injury. I think he should have called it quits, actually. Now was the time before... You know, the big injuries come. And in fact, actually, it would have made sense. But he, he's like his brother. They, they, they can't kind of give it up they've played it all their life and he's they... not anywhere near as good as Payton no no but he's like his brother in terms of his determination to carry on and you know his brother played on even towards the end when the end was coming and then took that horrific neck injury um, I think that this is another case of I mean, could he still it came be... back and he did but made a super bar yeah could that. could it be and he was elite he, well that. it's Payton there's a difference he read defence is one of the best in the game in it whereas oh, Eli yeah. Eli yeah, he's been great in certain situations, but it's the end of the career. And I'd like to see a player leave with what they've got intact. Um, I'm worried about him for this and, year. And that's gradually... I'm worried about him for this year. And if I'm saying him. as a coordinator, left-hand side is a risk because I don't think he's covering the if, left. If take, to risk in the NFL taking a corner off a player because you don't think the quarterback's going to spot him, and I'm saying that at this level, either I'm mad or I'm right. He just doesn't get the time. He just seems to be... No time. It's like he gets the ball... He, he was, knows he knows the pressure's coming, and he just sort of holds on to it. Yeah, he started to see. Just, he started to see shadows. He started yeah. to see. He started to see. And that's what, the problem. It's man. a deer in the headlights, and it's not because he's not experienced. It's not because he he can't read the game. He has all those skills. The trouble is, he doesn't trust the players around him, and therefore he's holding on to the ball. Anyway, my point is, if you're taking Evan Ingram at 68, then you're playing the wrong game. Yeah, you need. To, because that was just ridiculous. The, forget the tight end at that point in the draft. Forget it. Go deep down. Take. Don't worry about scarcity of position. There isn't scarcity. It's tight end. There's 32 out there. There's probably legitimately 24 or 25 you I'm can start. I'm actually angry that someone's got him at 19. I think it's That's mad. Just absolutely. Whoever did that, they should seriously, quit. They should let quit me, quit please quit. let me be in a league with you. Please give me an opportunity to draft the, that against that you. Come on. Come on there. That's maddening. Absolutely ridiculous. So no is the answer. Not drafting him. Avoid the tight end position. Wait, 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 wait. Um, and if you're there's playing... Better, there's as good players, 100, 
150 picks below him. Load, so. load up on more talented players with bigger upside. That's all I'm going to say. And if, you, and, you know, if you're taking a player at that point at tight end, you might as well take a risk. And if you are an Evan Ingram fan, I mean, please tell us why, because if it's something I haven't seen. I'd like to know why. If somebody can prove to me why tight ends are worth any kind of massive premium here, except in a premium tight end league where you're getting three points and bars, um, I'd love to know about it. But I'm telling you, in standard format PPR, half point and full point PPR, there are only two or three elite tight ends. And you're going to have to argue I outside think the top Howard, one. How OJ Howard is the one that can step forward from the pack. Well, I, I've got another guy, and that might be another video, I think can step forward this year and make a big imprint on the oh, tight okay. end movement. Well, so go. I think there's another guy who's not getting the credit. What is, of ADP? Who you've already mentioned him in the last two. It's Najuku. I think he can make a step forward. Yeah. I like his head space. This Although is there another, is a lot of mouth to Yeah, there is, but I just like his... You know, he plays very calm. Well, he, he came control. from the same draft as uh, OJ Howard, didn't he? Yeah, he's a very interesting guy. He's got some upside, but I'm not reaching for him. I'm just saying, I think he's a good tight end at a certain point. But you, again, I'm not reaching on any of them. And you'll notice in drafts, I, I mean, I'll wait and just pick up anybody. All day. Yeah, a lot of people say late QB. I say late tight end. Like, like, I'm not exactly the same. And get Greg Olsen for court, you. Quarterbacks, get... if you've got a lead one, that's fine. You've had to pay a premium. That's fine. I accept that. But you better make sure if you do take that quarterback early, you have to nail a top five guys. No point in getting number seven or number eight. That's no good because you've taken a premium pick. Better get it right because you're not going to get the upside if you don't. But if you are, if you're not got a, a good one because you're focused on other areas, then wait and then see if you can pick a guy out of the pack that can do that for there you. There's quite a few. Evan Ingram. Do not touch him with a basketball. No. In fact, probably insert that barge pole. Even if you've got a barge pole, Whoever's isn't? picking them at 19, please come and tell us why. If anyone owns a barge pole, it'd be interesting. To... <laughs> don't, don't get me to wear a barge pole. That's no. the only thing I'd say. Thank you. Okay. Um, thanks very much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, as ever, give it a like. And if you've enjoyed this series, consider subscribing. We always enjoy it. And thanks very much for watching. And, and as Al says, please share, subscribe and like as much as well, you can. Co comments the comments well, make yeah. the difference for us. Tell us why Evan Ingram's the next big thing. because yeah. uh, Maybe you see him as round see. two talent. We certainly don't. Somebody does. Yeah, we don't. Somebody does. I don't Round know. 22 talent, maybe. I think they need to put in at home, personally. But yeah, I'll yeah. draft with them. I don't mind. I'll go head to head. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching.